remember he was sick from when he was little with ear infections, coughs, colds. He was just always ill. He also had a hernia at his belly button and I was worried about it because it looked odd when he cried, but apparently they're normal in babies, so I tried to put it out of my mind. He was struggling enough with his ear infections as it was. I first saw him after his first birthday. He was referred to me by his primary care provider after experiencing repeated ear infections, which remained chronic under my care. I remember looking through his medical records and noticing that an abdominal hernia had been reported, but as a common childhood complaint, this didn't raise any particular concerns at the time. Nursery was great. He had so much energy. I thought he'd finally use it up, but he was still bouncing around when he got home. At times he was a little too forceful with his friends, but I figured because he was a late talker, he was just struggling to express himself. The one problem with nursery was that he got sick a lot. Whenever there was a cold going around, he got it, straight to his tonsils. It was heartbreaking seeing him sick so often. I also noticed that his tummy was getting bigger. I was worried there was something wrong, so I took him back to see the doctor. A visit after his third birthday led me to revisit his medical records. After repeated infections, I'd scheduled him for an adenotonsillectomy, and by this time he already had T-tubes inserted in his ears. His mum was comparing the frequency of his infections to other children his age. At this point, I noticed a change in his facial features too. His tongue was wider and his breathing heavy, so I was concerned his airways were obstructed. This triggered a niggling suspicion. Could this be a lysosomal storage disease? I tried to evaluate the facts. The symptom lineup could just be a coincidence, but what if it wasn't? I called the mother in and discussed referring her son to a geneticist. Shortly after, the diagnosis was confirmed. It was mucopolysaccharidosis type 2, or MPS2, also known as Hunter syndrome. He started school at the age of five in a special needs program. They thought his delayed speech development and sickness had put him behind other children. The teachers also noticed that he had difficulty hearing, so he has hearing aids now. He's happy and well looked after, but he's still not the most communicative of children. Not too long ago, I was in his room while he was sleeping and he stopped breathing. I started panicking and I called my husband. Just as he ran into the room, my son let out a loud snore. At diagnosis, we were told to prepare ourselves that the life expectancy for boys with MPS2 can be as young as 12 years. Of course, it was so hard to hear, but it has made me appreciate the time I have with my son. We have adapted our lives to fit around him. By the age of 10, his breathing was severely obstructed. We did a sleep study and decided continuous positive airway pressure therapy would help his sleep apnea. 